Hi everyone, today we are talking about five steps to solve any kind of kinematics problem. Here we go. So I'm just going to show the steps first and then I'm going to show them in action afterwards. First one, read the problem and underline important parts of the problem. This isn't a crucial step, but as a teacher I've seen so many students just skip this step and then get a lot of little things wrong. I highly recommend this problem, especially if you feel overwhelmed. The second part, again, is another one students often skip, draw a picture of the problem. And I do just want to say that the more difficult the problem is, the more crucial it is to have a drawing of the problem and to be able to visualize it. Number three, list your known variables and list your unknown variables. And especially when it comes to kinematic, you want to list three known variables and you want to list one unknown variable and i'll show that with an example if it doesn't really make sense number four select the appropriate equation for the problem again this might not make too much sense right now but in the next slide it will make sense and number five check your answer by asking does it make sense so for example if it said the slug was moving five million miles an hour you might want to check your work. I'm not, I don't know too many slugs that go 5 million miles an hour. All right, so let's, uh, oh, let's look at number four, select the appropriate equation. So when it comes to kinematics, there are five major formulas. I think most teachers allow you to have a formula sheet or things like that. But if you have to memorize, you need to know these five formulas, these five equations here, okay? This is an absolute must. Ha put this on your formula sheet, write it down. If you have to memorize it, memorize it. But you need to know these five. Okay, uh, first, before we look at what these five formulas are, what we're going to be doing is let's look at the variables. We have A symbolizing acceleration. We call this triangle thing delta. Delta V, uh, symbolizing change in velocity. Uh, v sub F, symbolizing velocity final. V sub zero, sub, sub, uh, <laughs> uh, meaning velocity initial. Uh, delta T, symbolizing change in time. And delta X, change in position or displacement. Okay, so we, once you know these, you can see these five formulas, each having one of uh, four of the variables shown to the right. Okay, so I'm going to move on to the next slide, but if you need to copy this down or anything like that, I'll make sure to pause the video and do that right now. Okay, so let's look at the first example. This is an average example, a pretty good example of how to use what we just talked about. Jim and Cindy decide to go on a ferry ride together as friends. The ferry makes a short run between two docks, one in New Jersey, the other in New York. As the ferry approaches New York, traveling in the positive x direction, its speed is 7.4 meters per second. If the ferry slows to a stop in 12.3 seconds, what is its average acceleration? So a lot of students struggle with word problems, okay? Sadly, everything in physics is word problems, but something that will really help you out with that if you really struggle with word problems is underlining important things. Like for example, this whole first sentence is not important at all. You, uh, I'm not going to underline it. I'm, I'm crossing it out, but you don't have it. Does it's not needed? It says now the ferry makes a short run between two do, two docks, one in New Jersey, the other in New York. As the ferry approaches New York, traveling in the positive x direction. Okay, that's important. Traveling in the positive x direction. Its speed is 7.4 meters per second. Whenever you see numbers, it's probably something you want to underline. If the ferry slows to a stop in 12.3 seconds, what is its average acceleration? Okay. This is important because when you have to reread the problem because you feel confused, you don't really have to read everything. You just have to read what you underline. Uh, next is to draw a picture. And like I said, the picture is more important the harder the problem is okay i would say this is a medium level problem so let's kind of draw this out we have the ferry here okay uh and the ferry is moving 7.4 meters per second and then let's see it's going to dock in new york i'm going to draw something like this it's docking here again again you don't really have to draw these could be blocks if you want whatever you want 
Now let's kind of write some things down. We know the speed is equal to 7.4 meters per second. We know how long it's going to take the boat to get from here to the other side is going to be a time of 12.3 seconds. And what we're looking for here is we want to find what the acceleration is. Okay, so we want to find what the acceleration is as it slows to a stop. So remember what I said. What I said is we need to list our knowns and we need to list our unknowns. So we have the speed that is traveling at the beginning, 7.4, and then the time it takes to get to the other side, 12.3 seconds, and the acceleration, which we don't know, that's what we're looking for. But also remember, when it comes to kinematics, you need to have three known variables. At the moment, we only have two, the speed at the beginning and the time. But if we read this again, we see keywords such as slow to a stop in 12.3 seconds. So that means the speed when it reaches the end over here is going to be equal to zero meters per second because it comes to a stop. Now we have three known variables and our one unknown. So let's now, now that we have this, let's go look at our formula sheet. Let's, for example, look at this formula. Let's see what we know in this formula and what we don't know. We're going to be checking like each of them. So for the first one, this delta x, we don't know what that is. So I'm just going to put an x here. V initial, uh, we do know what that is. The speed at the beginning is 7.4 meters per second. Uh, time, we do know what that is as 12.3. Uh, we don't know the acceleration and we do know time. Since we don't know two of the variables, that means we can't use this formula. Now let's look at this formula. Oops. Oops. Sorry about that. When we look at this formula here, let's see what we know. Acceleration. Oh, uh, we don't know what that is. Okay, that's what we're looking for. V final. We do know that it's going to come to a stop at the end and it's gonna be zero meters per second, so we know that. The initial velocity, we know that the boat at the beginning is going 7.4 meters per second, so we do know that. And we, the time, we do know the time. It's gonna take 12.3 seconds for the boat to come to a stop. So now, perfect. This one has one missing variable that we don't know, and that's the one we're looking for, and now we have everything else, okay? The other, so this is the formula that's gonna work. The other formulas won't work. So we're gonna put that in. We have acceleration is equal to velocity final minus velocity initial divided by time. And let's plug things in. Acceleration, that's what we're looking for. Velocity final, it comes to a stop, so that's zero. It's The boat was going 7.4 meters per second at the beginning. Oops, let me write meters per second. And it took 12.3 seconds to come to a stop. Now, if I put this into my cal calculator, 0 minus 7.4 divided by 12.3 and I get negative 0 0.6 meters per second squared. Okay, it's a reasonable number and we see it all makes sense. Okay, and that's pretty much it. Okay, that's all the steps. If you know this, you can solve more than 80% of the pro problems, no problem. Okay, if the problems are harder, I would highly suggest focusing a lot on underlining the problems and drawing the picture accurately. That's what's really going to help. Thanks for watching, everybody.